When it comes to custom bike building, there are a lot of skills that you have to learn, especially if you're like me and you're working on your first project. Personally, I have no experience in engineering and just rough understanding of motorcycle mechanics. But since I've set out to conquer this ambitious project to completely transform the BMW into a tracker slash bread side custom bike, I have to learn quite a few new skills. My dream is to one day be able to do all the steps that are required to build a custom bike myself. I want to learn how to weld, how to fabricate parts, how to paint, how to Cerakote, how to rebuild an engine, how to do the electrics. The list could go on, but I guess you get the point. But learning all of these skills takes a lot of time. So what I often tend to do is jump straight into a project without really knowing what I'm doing. I may look at the basics, but mainly I just start and then see where I hit a roadblock and just try to figure out a solution to that problem on the go. On the one hand, that's a great approach because when you just start, you don't think about all the things that you have to learn before you could start, which slows you down and you just get going. For me personally, it's also a much better learning environment. If I learn a new skill, when I actually have to solve a problem, it sticks way better. On the other hand, however, there's one downside to this approach. And I've noticed that the other day when I started designing a headlight bracket for the BMW, it was easy to wing simple projects like the brake fluid reservoir bracket that I've made a video about, check it out right here. But now that the projects get more complicated, I quickly run into problems that I can't really solve without a proper understanding of Fusion 360. And also, I've noticed that my projects get super messy. I've never really learned how to get a good structure in your project, how to keep everything organized, how to keep everything clean, so that you could actually go back and change things. Now I just have a really long timeline with different commands and like, it's all over the place. I don't know what I did when, when I'm finished. And since my projects are normally not done with the first iteration, this is kind of hard because then I can't really go back and change stuff. So I decided it was time to learn the basics of Fusion 360. If you follow this channel for a while now, you know that I got a 3D printer and I'm absolutely fascinated by the Ender 3 V2 that I've got. It's such a great addition to the workshop. You can design prototypes super quickly and it's a great tool to have when building a custom bike. But in order to design something, you need to learn a 3D modeling software. I use Fusion 360 for that, which is a great software. It has a lot of tools, probably more than I will ever need, and it's free for personal use. What's also great about Fusion 360 is that it's so popular, which means that there are a lot of resources out there, tutorials, classes that you can learn from. But I want to highlight two resources that have helped me immensely to understand the basics of Fusion 360, and I think they'll help you too. So what I started with were the free classes that Autodesk, the company behind Fusion 360, provides on their website. That's a great starting point to get all the basics right, get an overview of the program and to learn how to generally organize a project. So after finishing all the basic classes on Fusion 360 from Autodesk, I went and looked for something more hands-on where I could actually follow along some projects. And I found this great YouTube channel that's called Product Design Online. This guy has a series of videos which is called Learn Autodesk Fusion 360 in 30 days. Each of the 30 videos is a tutorial for a very specific project. First, you build a very basic Lego brick and then they get gradually more advanced and you learn more advanced techniques, but you always apply it directly. So first day you build the Lego brick, then you build different bottles, light bulbs, all the way up to earbuds, which is already a more complex project. What's great about this series of practical tutorials is that you can follow along. And for me, that makes it so much easier to remember all of the different things that I've learned. Going through all of this material has helped me to properly understand the basics of Fusion 360. It gives me a foundation that I can now build on. I know how to organize my project, but I can go back and change things. I also know how to use dimensions and constraints, which is vital if you want to tweak your part later on. And obviously with my design skills, the first prototype isn't gonna be perfect. So I definitely have to go back and change a few things. I've also learned techniques that will hopefully help me with a headlight bracket so that I can actually connect the different planes and stuff like that. So I'll just link everything down below that has helped me and you can just pick whatever helps you the best. I know there's a lot of 3D printing going on at the moment, but I definitely think that getting a 3D printer can be a huge advantage, especially for someone just starting out. At least for me, it was easier and cheaper to start with a 3D printer than go straight to fabricating parts. That way I can get an understanding of how one part 
parts to look at can make changes without having to spend a lot of time and money. And overall, I hope that these insights into my custom bike building and 3D printing journey help you out. It's not always easy, but it's well worth it. And if you want to see how bad you can mess up with a 3D printer, watch this video next.